Hey, welcome back to Sports Cards Analysis. I'm JT with another Case Break Simulation. Today we got 2023 Tops Tier 1 Baseball. Here's a couple examples of cards that you might see. Let me tell you a little bit about this channel if you haven't seen it yet. I am going to break down this product and give you the best statistical teams to purchase in a group break. That is what I do here. Uh, I will give you a bunch of ROI and stats and all kinds of stuff. And if you make a purchase, I hope you hit. But if you don't, it's not my fault. Uh, I'm just here to give you information to make you an informed buyer so you're not gambling. So first things first, Steel City has this case listed for $2,949. If we distribute the cost of that case across all the cards equally, let's see how much we should pay per team. So the team with the number of unique autographs is the Yankees, then the Cubs, the Braves. But if we look at the total number, when we break out the print run of those autograph cards, we actually have the most Cubs, then the Yankees, then the Phillies. There are cut autos in here, so those are obviously worth a lot of money, but um, they're one of one, so um, they're factored in this table equally. So it doesn't really matter. So if you wanted to buy based on the probability that you'll get a hit, you want to buy the Cubs at $190. Run by the Yankees at $181. This is just for the probability that you'll get an autograph. Now, if you want to go off the total number of cards, which is what I think you should do, the Yankees have the most cards in this set than the Cubs, Braves, Astros, and you want to pay around $250 for the Yankees if you're just paying for probability. Remember, this doesn't have anything to do with the value of the cards or the autographs on them. This is just the distribution of the case cost, this $2,949, across all of the cards equally so that you're paying for the probability and not for the player. So this is uh, 1 through 10, then 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and then the remaining teams there. Okay, and now let's talk about product strength. This is more valuable to a lot of people because this will include the actual ROI, the which I get from eBay and check out my cards. I create a strength metric, which tells you, you know, Shohei Otani is going to be a five. The bench players are going to be one. Um, and based on how much money you can make based on getting those hits. And so I developed this metric, it's one through five. And then I do 200 case breaks, uh, a simulation of 200 case breaks. And then I break it down. So. Before I do the case breaks, I do analyze the, those, those, um, that scale according to the checklist. And this checklist for tier one has a decent amount of fives, but mostly twos and threes. So there's some fluff in here. There's some stuff that kind of fills out the product in order for it to have a, a lot of boxes, a lot of hobby boxes. But there is some high value stuff in here. A lot of Otani's, there's a Harry Carey cut auto. There's uh, a whole bunch of just awesome Yankees. And, you know, when you talk about teams like the Angels, you're not getting a bunch of crap. You're getting some Otanis and Trouts, some Rendones. But for the most part, you're getting good players uh, who stay healthy, um, whose autographs are healthy as well. So overall, the auto value in this is about a 2.8 out of 5 there, just because of a lot of this fluff. And then the total product strength is a 3.0. That's, that's from my scale. But let's look at ROI. So I simulate 200 case breaks and then I calculate the average ROI for all cases. That's divided by 200. So that number seems low, $60. Yes, it's low because it's over 200 cases. Now I didn't hit the angels in all 200 cases or I didn't get an auto of an angel in all 200 cases. This is just the average if we were to break 200 cases of this product. And this is based on the hobby box configuration, the pack odds, things like that. So it's pretty good. I also tell you the team strength in the checklist. The Yankees have the best overall checklist strength. They've got the highest valued players, players that return a high ROI. So do the Angels. But because a lot of those cards are memorabilia cards and not autographs, you can see here the Angels have a decent uh, strength in, in memorabilia, but not really high. 22, that's, you know, bottom third uh, for all the teams for autographs. The Yankees are the highest in all categories, best checklist. They have, you know, a lot of just great players for the Yankees from Jeter to Judge to Ruth and, and beyond. There's a lot of just great Yankee players in general, so there's a lot of great ones in this checklist. So I'm not going to sort by product strength. I'm actually going to sort by average ROI. And remember, this is by over 200 cases. I'm going to go into the next table. We'll tell you how many cases I did hit these teams in. So there's 
uh, 1 through 10. There's 11 through 20. Take screenshots. Use this. When you make purchases, use this. This is average ROI over 200 cases. There we go. There's all of them. Now, I didn't hit those in all 200 cases. So how often did I hit certain cards? Well, I hit the Angels memorabilia cards in 54 cases. And when I did hit, instead of dividing by 200, I divide by 54 here. I made it generally a return on investment of $203 uh, based on my data uh, for any time that a case produced the Angels. That's all memorabilia cards in that case for the Angels. Now, I don't know how many cards per time, like maybe there was two or three. But when I did hit the Angels memorabilia card, I hit it 54 times and it gave me that ROI. So Angels autographs um, also had a high ROI because there's a lot of low serial numbered Otanis and Trouts. I hit an Angels autograph 97 times out of 200 cases. I hit an, a Braves autograph 133 times out of 200 cases. So that's actually about three fourths of the time there's going to be a Braves autograph. And this is over 200 cases. So this simulation is pretty representative of the full, you know, data, the full set of cards. Uh, it's a good sample size. Okay, so I'm going to go through all seven pages of these and you can see how many times I hit this combination of team and hit type and then what the ROI was. So that's page one, that's page two. Just take screenshots and now you'll know. There's 171 cases that had Cubs autographs in them. There's some awesome Cubs autographs in this. There's also some very horrible Cubs autographs, at least by the standards of right now. Maybe some of those players will pan out. Uh, but 171, that's greater than three-fourths of the time. Um, what is that? Almost like seven-eighths of the time, really, uh, that a Cubs autograph gets hit. So that's pretty good probability. The ROI might be low because some of those guys are unknown. So there you go. There's page three. There's page four. Just take a look. Take a screenshot. Use this in your purchasing. I think this is the best table that I've developed so far. There you go. That's everything. Okay. Now, let's go to the master checklist and see what, what's typical in this product. So this is not um, everything. This is... Uh, there are no base cards in this product, so it's common for a player like Acuna to only have two unique cards, but they have a high print run, a lot of just a lot of cards. Um, unique autographs looks like one, memorabilia one, so that makes sense. So this just kind of tells you, you know, the top players in the set. This is a, you could see this, that even though there's a lot of low value guys, like if we start going, you know, deeper into, the, into these tables here, we got, okay, there's like a lot of Paul Konerko cards, fine. Peyton, Burdick, uh, whatever. But there are a lot. The, the highest frequency uh, has the best players. You know, Acuna, Alonzo, Alvarez. Yeah, there's some Byron Buxton's in there, some Larry Walkers. But they'll return you a good value. There's a decent amount of Aaron Judges, Christian Yelich. Okay, so that's, that's just the top 10 players in this set, in this product. Now, let's just look at for the teams, because that's really what we want to know. Total number of cards by team. The Yankees have the most, then the Cubs. Don't go off this unique metric because that doesn't always tell you the full story. You want to explode the print run and count how many cards. So if the card's out of 99, you want to add all 99 to this list. Um, and that's what I do. So now you know how many cards per team. And that's the first 10, then the next 10, then the next 10, and then the rest. So that's how many cards by team. Look at that. Use that. What about print runs? Well, there's 1,282 one-of-ones. That's a lot of one-of-ones, but... Um, that's typical of most top products. So if you're chasing a one-on-one, decent product to get. Now, if you are chasing that one-on-one, -on -one, which team should you buy? Well, the Yankees have 130 one-on-ones. That's twice as many as any other team in this product. The Red Sox have 65. So if you're chasing one-on-ones, you're like, I got to get my hands on one-on-ones. And that's probably why the Yankees ROI is so high. Um, go after the Yankees. They have 130 one-on-one -one cards in this product. So there's the top 10 in one of ones. I'm not even going to go any further into that. Now let's look at my simulation results. First, I'm going to show you the results for just case number 200. Then I'm going to show you all 200. Okay. So for one case, this these were the results. This is what you. This is a typical expectation. You should get two autographs per pack, and one memorabilia card. There's 12, basically one pack per box. 12 boxes per case. So you should get 24 autographs. Let's see how many we got here. Uh, we just sort this by autos or filter it by autos and looks like we got 24 so you could typically see anywhere but you know one one of one you can get some non serial numbered cards here 
uh, which we get a pretty fair amount of non-serial numbered cards. Um, got a Lewis Robert. We got, see this guy, Miles Mastroboni for the Cubs. Not very high value, to be honest with you, and not really going to return an ROI in the future. But there's some decent guys in here. Uh, got a Acuna Auto out of 50. Um, so that's like what your typical expectations could be. And that's where you should set your expectations at. We did get a memorabilia, one of one of Larry Walker for the Tier 1 Relics Design B, whatever that is. Now let's look at the breakdown by car, by team uh, for the cards we got. We got the most Royals. So we got five of those. Not a high sample size, but then we got some Yankees, Braves, Rangers, Mariners. And you can see the rest. That's just for one case. Now we did get those two one of ones. But what about all 200? 200 cases. Don't ignore this here. I forgot to edit this. I used to do 20. Now I do 200 sim simulated case breaks. We got a ton of one of ones. We got 165. So that means that more than three fourths of the time, there will be a one of one in the case. So, you know, for every four cases, you should hit three one of ones basically. And here they all are. I'm not even going to go through them because it doesn't really matter to your purchasing. Just this number here tells you everything you need to know. 165 one of ones. Now, I take, let's take the first 20 case break simulations and look at how the ROI was different by team. I know it's hard to read these team names, but you can see that it's not always the same. Sometimes the Yankees have the highest. But like this one had the Blue Jays being the highest. And there's some decent ROI in these areas. So this is just which teams had R the most ROI by case break. And the case break numbers over here, they're kind of out of order. But you can see sometimes the Cardinals. So, yeah, you might buy a team that you don't have high confidence in. But there are cases, there are cases here. Case number 13 had a nice Cardinals return. You know, you just never know. Rangers. Uh, so that's just to show you, look, the Angels hit hard here. And the other ones were just just totally decimated in the on the scale of the chart but there you go look at the Braves had a good ROI there so you could see if you want to use this to kind of figure out where we're getting a lot of average value the Yankees do pretty good the Cubs do pretty good uh, so there you could take screenshots and use that however you want I kind of just like showing those they're colorful they're nice now for all 200 case breaks we got the most we definitely got by far the most Yankees we got you know tons of Yankees 621 of them then the Cubs Braves and this is kind of representative of the master product as a whole so here is the breakdown of the first 20 teams and how they uh, how they break down in 200 case breaks now for one of ones what did we actually get versus what you know there actually are we did get the most Yankees we got 17 of them then 12 Mets 8 Red Sox 8 Phillies so we could chase one of ones and we can get these teams here I, I would ignore all these ones because who cares if I got a 1 of 10. It's a really high end product, so you're going to get some really low, low numbered cards. Now, how many? Let's just look at the breakdown by card type. For autographs, we got the most Cubs, then Yankees, then Phillies, then Braves, then. It. So I know you're not buying 200 cases, but if you're buying one case, this information could inform you on where you should focus your attention. Yankees, Padres, Red Sox, Mets for memorabilia cards. And remember, the memorabilia cards in this product are very good. They're very good. So that's it. That's Tier 1 Baseball 2023. Hopefully you can use this information and get a lot of hits. Thanks for joining. See you next time.